Hi everyone, it's me Grace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the difference between Hong Kong Cantonese and Guangzhou Cantonese or just mainland Chinese Cantonese. What prompted me to make this video is some of the comments that I receive on my videos. Some people, when they compliment me, they say, wow, Grace, you speak such great Hong Kong Cantonese. Your Cantonese is very Hong Kong-like. It's very, um, it's very authentic Hong Kong Cantonese. And that made me think like, the fact that you've pointed out that my Cantonese is Hong Kong Cantonese, does that mean that there's a difference between um, Cantonese from Guangzhou? I remember when I first started learning Cantonese um, on, I used CantoneseClass101.com. I was listening to the podcast on the website and the intro to the podcast, it always say like something along the lines of, we're teaching you Hong Kong Cantonese. Like they'd always say that. And so that got me thinking like, what, what are the differences between Hong Kong Cantonese and mainland Chinese Cantonese? So if you didn't know, Cantonese is mainly spoken in Hong Kong, Macau, and also like some parts of Southern China. So in Guangdong um, and Guangxi also. Now there isn't a big difference between Hong Kong Cantonese and like Guangdong Cantonese because I definitely had conversations with people from Guangdong and you know, like there's no, I haven't really noticed too much of a difference. Um, but there are small, small differences. So let's go through them today. So the first thing is that Hong Kong Cantonese has a lot of English in it. And the reason why is because Hong Kong used to be a British colony for, you know, quite a few years. And so I think that influenced the language. So I'll give you guys some examples. So sometimes when speaking in Cantonese, they will just throw in some English words. Um, even though there are, you know, words in Chinese, in Hong Kong, they will just use the English, whereas in mainland China, they would probably actually say the Cantonese word. So an example would be, someone might say, Nei sam sang tong o sik lunch. So lunch being lunch, right? But lunch in Cantonese is mm tan, but it's very common to say sick lunch. Um, like, it doesn't mean that in Hong Kong, they will never say mm tan, like they do. But sometimes they just say lunch, but they probably wouldn't do that in mainland China. Another example is like, uh, friend. So friend is supposed to be like friend, right? But friend in Cantonese is pang yao, you know, but they might say friend. Or, check ha. So this is quite interesting because check, like as in like to check, right? And then if you, if you put ha after a verb in Cantonese, it means like, a little bit like for a short period of time maybe like something quick so check how would be like do a quick check like you know just check it a bit right so check so can you like check it right and i don't even know how to say check in cantonese i feel like if i was to say check i would just say check and that isn't unnatural like in, in hong kong that sounds perfectly natural they would understand me you know, it's not weird that I didn't use the Cantonese word. Whereas maybe in mainland China, it might be a bit weird that I'm using, I'm just throwing in English into my Cantonese. So this next one is something that I noticed when I was watching like a TV drama. And I remember when I first heard it, I was like, what? Like, this is so weird. Like, I just found it so interesting. And then I heard it many more times after that. So like when apologizing, right? If you want to say sorry in Cantonese, you can say um ju or you can say mho you see, depending on what you're sorry for. But in Hong Kong, they might just say sorry. Like they'll just say sorry law. They they'll even add law, which is like just like an emotive particle. It doesn't really have a meaning, but it's just like sorry, sorry law, you know. And it's like I remember when I heard that, I was like, whoa, why do they keep speaking English? But like I said perfectly natural in in hong kong so that's one thing about hong kong Cantonese. There's, there's a lot of um english words they might say boss like you know um office um all with her office right um they might you know just stuff like that they will just um incorporate it into the cantonese so oftentimes if i don't know a word in cantonese i'll just say the english and hope for the best and sometimes it works like sometimes i'll say the english word and that's fine. Like, I didn't, even, I didn't even know that it was fine, but it's fine. And I'm just so grateful because <laughs> that, that really um, is quite helpful. When you don't know something, just say it in English. You never know. It might literally be natural. Like, it might be natural. 
So those are actual English words, but I feel like Hong Kong Cantonese also has more English loan words. So if you don't really know what I mean by that, I actually made a video where um recently where I was quizzing my friend. I was saying English loan words and seeing if my friend could recognize it. So they're basically words, right, in Cantonese um, that come from the English. So they, they aren't exactly like the English. They're basically like they come from the English. So it's like the English word and then they adapt it to fit the Cantonese um, like alphabet and stuff like that. So it actually can be written with characters, with Chinese characters, right? But those characters sound a bit like the English. So it's not like friend or lunch or check, which is literally the English, but it's a bit different. So an example is chocolate in Cantonese is jugulek. So jugulek is supposed to be like chocolate, right? So you can see where it comes from. So in Hong Kong Cantonese, they have more of those. So for example, to park your car in Hong Kong, they would say pak te. So pak is like park, it comes from that, right? Whereas in mainland China, they will say teng te. So teng is the Cantonese word for stop. So teng te is, is to stop your car, to park it, right? But in Hong Kong, they will say pak te. So if you said teng te to a Hong Konger, they would understand that. Like it's not like they wouldn't understand because it makes sense, right? But it's just that they would probably say pak te. Um, an example is bus is basi in Hong Kong Cantonese, but in the mainland they would say gong gong hei te, right? Which sounds more like um the Mandarin um way to say bus, which is gong gong teacher. It's literally the same characters. And then another example is vitamin, which in Hong Kong Cantonese they will say wai ta meng, which sounds like vitamin, right? Wai ta meng vitamin. You can kind of hear it. Whereas in the mainland they will say wai sang so. So you can see there are some differences. I think in mainland China, like they can they can usually understand the Hong Kong Cantonese, the loan words because of like Hong Kong TV dramas and stuff like that. Um, and just like exposure to Hong Kong media. But you can say in theory, if they if they weren't exposed to it, if someone wasn't didn't really watch Hong Kong stuff, didn't really interact with any Hong Kong speaker, maybe they would raise an eyebrow when hearing some of these loan words because that's not how they'd call it. So yeah, so I think in that case, like learning Hong Kong Cantonese as an English speaker is easier because there's just a lot of English and English sounding words in it, um, which is quite nice. Okay, so the last thing I want to touch on is Guangxi Cantonese. So if you're an OG, if you're an old fan, like um, you might know my story, my reasoning behind learning Cantonese. Um, I shared it. I've shared it in a few videos. It's basically that I had a friend who was Chinese and I basically went over to her house a lot and I went to martial arts with her and her mom couldn't speak English. Her mom could only speak Cantonese. And so I just, whenever they were speaking Cantonese, I felt really left out and I hated that. So I started learning Cantonese. So they were actually from Guangxi. That's actually where they were from. And I think back to that time when I first started learning Cantonese and I noticed some differences between the Cantonese that I was learning online on CantoneseClass101.com and the Cantonese that I was hearing and that she was speaking. So for example, one thing I noticed is that instead of saying ne, which means you, they would say ni, which is you in Mandarin. I found this really strange because I've learned that you in Cantonese is ne, but they're saying ni. And I remember I asked my learning partner at the time, and she was actually from Guangzhou, right? And I asked her about this and she was like, I've never heard that. Like usually it's ne, like ni is Mandarin. It's not Cantonese. So I don't know. That was a bit weird. I want to know if anyone has ever like heard this before because that's actually quite, makes me quite curious. Another thing is, um, for example, they pronounce some things differently. So hai, which is to be in Cantonese. So ngo hai, grace, I am grace. She would say hey. So she would say ngo hei and then her name. Um, so hi would be hey. So they pronounced it slightly differently. I watched a conversation online of Guangxi Cantonese, and like some of the some of the way they were pronouncing things were a bit like different. Like sang, they were like xiang. Like it was a bit different. So I think that's a bit more strong. But I think Guangzhou Cantonese, I haven't noticed a difference in pronunciation. But I think Guangxi, there is some differences now actually the way they pronounce the characters. All right guys, so that is it for this video on covering the differences between Hong Kong Cantonese and mainland Chinese Cantonese. Um, let me know 
of what you thought uh, did i get things right um is there anything else you can add are there any more differences i mean just comment down below did you know about these differences um yeah just let, let's have a conversation in the comments below but yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you liked it please give it a big big like that honestly really helps my channel and share it with your family and friends um that also really helps comment down below subscribe if you haven't already Follow me on Instagram, my Instagram, I will put it here and also in the description below. And I will also link my PayPal in, in the description below. So if you want to support me, you know, support this channel, um, you can make a donation. I'm so grateful and thankful for you guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.